The Dream Walker. I've always been a vivid dreamer. As a kid, I'd wake up with memories so sharp they felt more real than my waking life. But it wasn't until my 25th birthday that I realized I wasn't just dreaming I was entering other people's dreams. It started innocently enough. I woke up in a classroom, but everything was slightly off. The chalkboard was made of rippling water, and the students had blurry faces. A girl in the front row was frantically trying to finish a test, her pencil moving at impossible speeds. Hey, I said, tapping her shoulder. This is just a dream. You don't have to stress. She turned to me, confused. Who are you? How did you get in my dream? I woke up for real then, heart pounding. It felt different from my usual dreams, more visceral, more present. I chalked it up to too much wine at my birthday dinner and tried to forget about it. But it happened again the next night. And the night after that. Soon I was slipping into strangers' dreams every time I closed my eyes. Sometimes I was a passive observer, watching as people flew or fought monsters or relived childhood memories. Other times I could interact, changing the course of the dream. At first it was exhilarating. I helped people face their fears, gave advice, even played matchmaker once or twice. I felt like a superhero, swooping in to save people from their own subconscious. But then I started noticing. Something else in the dreams. A presence. A shadow that didn't belong. The first time I saw it, I was in the dream of an old man. He was sitting in a rocking chair, looking through a photo album. Each picture came to life as he touched it, filling the room with ghostly figures from his past. That's when I noticed the dark shape in the corner. It was vaguely humanoid, but wrong somehow too tall, too thin, with limbs that bent at unnatural angles. As I stared, it slowly turned its head towards me. Where its face should have been, there was only a swirling void. I jolted awake, drenched in sweat. I told myself it was just part of the old man's dream, a manifestation of some buried fear. But deep down, I knew that wasn't true. I saw it again a few nights later, lurking in the background of a little girl's tea party dream, and again in a teenager's anxiety dream about showing up to school naked. Each time it seemed to notice me. Each time it got a little closer. I tried to stop dreamwalking. I drank sleeping pills, hoping for dreamless nights. But the pills just made it harder to wake up when I saw the shadow creature. I'd be trapped, paralyzed, as it crept towards me with those impossibly long limbs. One night I woke up in a dream that felt different. The landscape was a blur of colors and shapes, constantly shifting and reforming. And standing in the center of it all was a woman with silver hair and eyes that seemed to glow. You're like me, she said, her voice echoing strangely. A dream walker. Who are you, I asked. What's happening to me? She smiled sadly. We have a gift and a curse. We can enter the dreams of others, but in doing so, we open a door. And sometimes things from the other side slip through. The shadow, I whispered. What is it? We don't have a name for them, she said. Nightmare eaters, dream stealers, voidlings. They feed on fear and imagination. And now that one has noticed you, it won't stop until it breaks through into your waking world. I felt a chill run down my spine. How do I stop it? You can't, she said simply, not alone. But I can teach you to protect yourself, to fight back. Are you willing to learn? I nodded, and my education began. Night after night, I'd find the silver-haired woman Amara. She eventually told me, and she'd teach me the ways of dream walking. How to control the dreamscape, how to move between dreams at will, how to wake myself up when things got dangerous. But the shadow creature was always there, watching, waiting, and it was getting stronger. I started seeing glimpses of it when I was awake a flicker of movement in my peripheral vision, elongated shadow that didn't match its source. I'd wake up with scratches on my arms or bruises I couldn't explain. My waking life began to suffer. I was constantly exhausted, jumping at every sound. I stopped answering calls from friends and family, too afraid I'd put them in danger. My boss noticed my declining performance and put me on probation. But how could I explain that I was fighting for my life every night in my sleep? Things came to a head one stormy night. I was in a particularly vivid nightmare, a maze of twisting corridors that kept rearranging themselves. 
I could hear the shadow creature scuttling behind me, its breath a raspy whisper. I turned a corner and found myself face to face with it. Up close, I could see that its skin was like living darkness, constantly rippling and reforming. It reached for me with hands that ended in foot-long claws. I tried to wake up, but nothing happened. I was trapped. Just as its claws were about to pierce my chest, a blinding light filled the corridor. Amara appeared, her hair floating around her like a silver halo. Run, she shouted. I'll hold it off. I hesitated for a moment, but the look in her eyes brooked no argument. I turned and sprinted down the corridor as the sounds of an otherworldly battle erupted behind me. I woke up gasping for air, my sheets soaked with sweat. For a moment, I thought I was safe, then I saw the shadow looming over my bed. Somehow, impossibly, it had followed me back. I scrambled out of bed, my heart pounding so hard I thought it might burst. The shadow creature moved with liquid grace, gliding across the floor towards me. Its void face seemed to grin, knowing it had won. In desperation, I closed my eyes and focused like Amara had taught me. I pictured a door in my mind, willing it into existence with every fiber of my being. When I opened my eyes, a shimmering portal hung in the air between me and the creature. Without hesitation, I dove through. I found myself back in the dream world, in a vast empty plain under a star-filled sky. Amara was there, looking battered but alive. You did it, she said, a note of pride in her voice. You created a gateway. But I brought it with me, I said, the guilt crushing me. I led it into the real world. Amara shook her head. It was always going to break through eventually, but now we have a chance to end this, once and for all. She waved her hand, and the empty plain transformed into a fortress of gleaming silver. We'll make our stand here, she said. When it comes through that portal, we'll be ready. We didn't have to wait long. The air rippled, and the shadow creature stepped through. But it wasn't alone. Behind it came a horde of nightmarish beings, things made of twisted flesh and living shadow, creatures with too many eyes and not enough mouths. Focus, Amara said, her voice steady. Remember what I taught you. This is a dream. Reality is what we make it. I closed my eyes, concentrating harder than I ever had before. When I opened them, I was clothed in armor that shone like the sun. A sword of pure light materialized in my hand. The battle that followed was like something out of a fever dream. We fought with weapons forged from pure imagination, reshaping the battlefield with every clash. I moved with impossible speed and grace, cutting through the nightmare creatures like they were mist. But for every monster we destroyed, two more seemed to take its place. We were slowly being overwhelmed. I saw Amara fall, a tendril of living darkness wrapped around her throat. With a scream of rage, I charged towards the shadow creature that had started it all. Our blades met in a shower of sparks light against darkness, reality against nightmare. We fought for what felt like hours, evenly matched. But slowly, inevitably, I began to tire. The sword grew heavy in my hands. My movements became sluggish. The shadow creature pressed its advantage, driving me back step by step. I felt the edge of the fortress behind me beyond it, an endless void. As the shadow creature reared back for a final blow, I had a moment of perfect clarity. This was a dream, my dream, and in my dreams I made the rules. I let go of my sword and raised my hands. Enough, I said, my voice ringing with power. This ends now. The world around us began to dissolve. The fortress crumbled away. The nightmare creatures evaporated like mist. Soon, only the shadow creature and I remained, floating in an endless white void. It lunged for me one last time, but its claws passed harmlessly through me. I reached out and gently touched its void face. I'm not afraid of you anymore, I said softly. And without fear, you have no power here. The creature let out a sound half shriek, half moan, and began to fade away. As it disappeared, I felt a weight lift off my soul that I hadn't even realized was there. I woke up in my bed, sunlight streaming through the windows. For the first time in months, I felt truly rested. I reached for my phone, ready to call my friends and family and apologize for my absence. 
but as I unlocked the screen, I froze. There in my photo gallery was a new picture. It showed me sleeping peacefully, and watching over me, with a gentle smile on her face, was Amara. I blinked, and the picture was gone. Had I imagined it? Was it a lingering effect of my time in the dream world? I don't know for sure. But sometimes when I'm on the edge of sleep, I think I hear Amara's voice. Sweet dreams, she whispers. And remember you're stronger than your nightmares. I've stopped entering other people's dreams now. But I sleep soundly, knowing that if darkness ever comes for me again, I have the power to face it. After all, as Amara taught me, reality is what we make it both awake and asleep. So if you ever find yourself in a nightmare, facing shadows that seem unbeatable, remember this, it's your dream, your mind, your rules. And no matter how dark the night, the dawn always comes. Sweet dreams, fellow dreamers. And may your nightmares always be just that dreams, unable to touch the waking world. But if they do, well now you know how to fight back. Sleep tight. Don't let the voidlings bite.